Welcome everyone to today's presentation on war design for Shia, presented on behalf of ThinkBrick Australia. So just some background information before we begin. This presentation will go through relevant standards such as AS3700 masonry structures, which is the primary standard used to determine shear capacity of an unreinforced masonry wall. We will also go through shear definitions, theory, and finally a worked example on how to design a shear wall. AS3700 dictates the engineering design requirements for masonry walls. The AS1170 series details the fundamental engineering principles which underpin all engineering design. In masonry, the mortar joints are the weak links and shear failure typically occurs at these interfaces. Unreinforced brick walls are subject to two different shear actions, out-of-plane shear and in-plane shear. Shear capacity is influenced by two factors, adhesion, which is the bond between the brick units and the mortar, and friction, which is the tendency of the bricks exerting a resisting force when being moved against one another. Out-of-plane shear is defined as shear forces acting normal to the face of the masonry wall. Out-of-plane forces that induce shear forces include wind or earthquake loads to name a few. The diagrams below show how out-of-plane forces act on a masonry wall and their force distribution. In-plane shear is defined as shear forces acting in the direction of the wall. In-plane forces that induce shear forces include any lateral loads such as wind or earthquake loads. The diagrams below show how in-plane forces act on a masonry wall and their force distribution. Both out-of-plane and in-plane shear is governed by the following equation, where the shear capacity is composed of V0, which is the shear bond strength component, and V1, which is the shear friction component. In these equations, phi is the capacity reduction factor, F-MS is the characteristic shear strength of the masonry, F-MT is the characteristic flexural tensile strength of the unreinforced clay masonry, AD, which is the design cross-sectional area of the bed joint under consideration, KV, which is the shear factor, and finally FD, which is the minimum design compressive stress acting on the bed joint. A capacity reduction factor shall be applied to the unreinforced masonry shear capacity. The capacity reduction factor for unreinforced masonry is 0.6 and can be found in Table 4.1 of AS3700. A shear factor KV is used to calculate the frictional component of the shear capacity and differs for different interfaces and locations. The shear factor ranges from 0 to 0 0.3 and can be found in Table 3.3 of AS3700. The design cross-sectional area of the bed joint under consideration, AD, varies depending on the bedding type. The design cross-sectional area for full bed and face bed are shown in the equations, where L is the length of the wall, TW is the thickness of the wall, and TS, which is the thickness of the face shell. Typically, brick walls use a full bed of mortar. At the location of membrane type, damp-proof courses and flashings, the design characteristic shear strength, F-MS, is typically taken as zero. At these material interfaces, there is no shear bond between the DPC and the brick. The DPC rests on the brick itself and only have mortar applied on the top side of the DPC. This is shown in the figure below. These materials are held in place solely by the weight force above. The minimum design compressive stress on bed joints, FD, shall be considered when designing a wall for horizontal shear. The value shall be determined resulting from the minimum design compressive force at the critical bed joint and the design cross-sectional area of that bed joint. Factors such as the wall's self-weight and other dead loads such as slabs or roof trusses shall be considered when determining the minimum design compressive stress on the bed joints. The critical bed joint varies depending on the walling configuration. Typically, the critical bed joint occurs at the top of the wall at a DPC, flashing or other atypical material interface. Here is a diagram of a masonry wall's behaviour when subjected to an in-plane shear force. As you can see, there are multiple failure modes, such as diagonal tension failure, tensional cracking at the heel, and biaxial compression failure at the toe. We will go through these in more detail in the following slides. The stress at the toe of the wall is induced by the compressive loads on the wall and the bending moment. 
The stress induced by compressive loads is calculated using the following combination, which can be found in AS1170. Table 4.1 of AS1170 shows the different combination factors for different building purposes. To ensure there is no crushing at the toe, we need to ensure that the compressive and bending stresses are less than the factored characteristic compressive strength of the masonry. This is calculated using engineering first principles, where sigma compressive is the compressive stress induced by self-weight and superimposed loads, sigma bending, which is the compressive stress induced by bending, phi, which is the capacity reduction factor, and finally, F-MB, which is the characteristic compressive strength of the masonry. Tension cracking at the heel can also occur as a result of in-plane shear forces. For the wall to be suitable, the heel must remain in compression. The following formula is used, where sigma base is the compressive stress at the base, and sigma bending, which is the compressive stress induced by bending. The wall must also resist overturning moment as a result of in-plane shear forces. The following equation is used, where M resisting is resisting moment caused by stabilizing forces, and M overturning, which is the overturning moment caused by in-plane forces. We will now go through a worked example on how to determine the out-of-plane and in-plane shear capacity of an unreinforced brick wall. This example requires us to design a load-bearing wall with a total factored design loading of 0.5 kPa. The wall is 2.7 meters high, made of standard brick units, using full bedding of M3 mortar. The wall spans horizontally at 2.4 meters and is supported on all four sides. There is no DPC at the bottom of the wall. We will confirm that the outer plane shear capacity is greater than the design loading. The wall uses standard brick units, with full bedding of M3 mortar. With a 0.5 kPa out of plane loading, the shear force acting on the wall is calculated to be 1.62 kN. The shear diagram is shown on the right. The capacity reduction factor phi is 0.6 for unreinforced masonry, which is obtained from Table 4.1 of AS3700. The characteristic tensile strength of the masonry, F-MT, is 0.2 MPa, which is obtained from Clause 3.3.3 of AS3700. The compressive stress at the bed joint, FD, at the bottom of the wall is calculated to be 0.046 MPa. FD at the top of the wall is zero, as there are no superimposed loads acting at the top of the wall. Therefore, the critical bed joint is at the top of the wall. The design cross-sectional area of the bed joint under consideration, AD, is calculated to be 2.64 times 10 to the 5 millimeters squared. The shear bond strength of the masonry, F-MS, is calculated to be 0.25 MPa, which satisfies the check for shear in the horizontal direction as stated in clause 3.3.4 of AS3700. The shear factor KV is 0.3 at bed joints and can be obtained from table 3.3 of AS3700. The shear bond strength is calculated to be 39.6 kN. Shear friction at the top of the wall is zero, as there are no superimposed loads acting at the top. The shear friction at the bottom of the wall is calculated to be 3.64 kN. We will now calculate the shear capacity, which takes the sum of the shear bond strength and shear friction. The shear capacity for both locations is greater than the design shear, and therefore the wall is okay. This example requires us to design a residential load-bearing wall with an in-plane loading of 50 kPa. A dead load of 30 kN per meter and a live load of 10 kN per meter are applied at the top of the wall. The wall is 2.7 meters high, made of standard brick units, using full bedding of M3 mortar. The wall spans horizontally at 2.4 meters and is supported on all four sides. There is a damp-proof course located at the bottom of the wall. We will confirm that the in-plane shear capacity is greater than the design loading. The wall uses standard brick units with full bedding of M3 mortar. With a 50 kPa in-plane loading, the shear force acting on the wall is calculated to be 7.43 kN. The shear diagram is shown on the right. The design cross-sectional area of the bed joint under consideration AD 
is calculated to be 2.64 times 10 to the 5 millimeters squared. The shear bond strength of the masonry, F-MS, is calculated to be 0.25 megapascals, which satisfies the check for shear in the horizontal direction as stated in clause 3.3.4 of AS3700. The shear factor, KV, is 0.3 where a DPC is located and can be obtained from table 3.3 of AS3700. The capacity reduction factor for unreinforced masonry is 0.6. The minimum compressive stress on the critical bed joint is 0.2916 and 0.2454 megapascals at the bottom and top of the wall respectively. The shear bond strength at the top of the wall is calculated to be 39.6 kilonewtons. Shear friction at the top of the wall is calculated to be 19.44 kilonewtons. The total shear capacity is the sum of the two components, which is calculated to be 59.04 kilonewtons. The shear bond strength at the bottom of the wall is zero, as the brick course rests on a DPC. Shear friction at the bottom of the wall is calculated to be 23.094 kilonewtons. The total shear capacity is calculated to be 23.094 kilonewtons. The shear capacity for both locations satisfies the design shear. As a result, the wall meets the sliding requirements and is OK for shear. We will now check for crushing at the toe. The following combination factor is used for a residential wall, which can be found in Table 4.1 of AS1170. Using the combination factors obtained from the previous slide, the following factor dead and live loads are calculated. The stress due to compressive loads is calculated to be 0.425 megapascals. The overturning moment as a result of the in-plane shear is calculated to be 20.06 kilonewton meters. The wall section modulus is calculated to be 105.6 times 10 to the 6 millimeters cubed. We will use this value to calculate the moment-induced bending stress. The moment-induced bending stress is calculated to be 0.19 megapascals. The net stress at the toe is the sum of the compressive and bending stresses, which is calculated to be 0.615 megapascals. The capacity reduction factor for unreinforced masonry in compression is 0.75, which is obtained from Table 4.1 of AS3700. The factored characteristic compressive stress of the masonry wall shall be greater than the net stress at the toe. The required characteristic compressive stress of masonry is required to be at least 0.82 megapascals. Using Table 3.1 of AS3700, we can determine the required characteristic unconfined compressive strength of unit, bed type, and mortar class. Here, we can see that a 15 MPA clay unit using full bed M3 mortar has a characteristic compressive strength of 5.4 megapascals, which is greater than the 0.82 megapascals required, and thus would be suitable. We will now check for tension at the heel. The compressive stress at the base is calculated to be 0.292 megapascals. As the difference between the compressive stress at the base and the bending stress is greater than zero, the heel does not experience any tension. We will now check for overturning at the toe. As you can see, we can see all of the actions that contribute to the overturning and resisting of the wall at the toe. The overturning moment was calculated previously as 20.06 kilonewton meters. The force resisting the overturning moment is the factored sum of the self weight and dead load, which is calculated to be 76.99 kilonewtons. The resisting moment is calculated to be 92.39 kilonewton meters, which is greater than the overturning moment. Therefore, the wall is stable and will not overturn. The association is also curated a design manual that provides information on the design requirements for unreinforced shear. It contains a lot of useful information on design and construction requirements, and I highly recommend you guys check it out. If you have any other questions regarding unreinforced shear design, please don't hesitate to contact the association, and we will be more than happy to help you guys out. The association also offers a wide range of free resources available to the public, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies. The association also has a technical hotline where we can answer any of your brick or block related inquiries. Should you have any questions about the design and construction of brick or blocks, 
please feel free to give us a call on the technical hotline. This concludes today's presentation on wall design for unreinforced shear. Thank you for your time, and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.